and welcome everybody to the Year of Stories industry webinar. We are delighted to see so many of you on the webinar as 2022 is shaping up to be a really exciting year with lots of opportunities to spotlight, celebrate and promote the wealth of stories inspired by, written or created in Scotland. The purpose of this webinar is to give you more detail about the year, as well as providing inspiration as to how to get involved and be part of our next themed year. I do hope you will join us in inspiring visitors with your new and untold stories next year. Remember, there's an opportunity to get involved at any level, whether it's using the hashtag, sharing content or developing specific campaigns aligned to the year. We will provide practical examples for businesses and organisations of all sizes of how to get involved as we go through the webinar. So to introduce myself as the host of the webinar, my name is Susan Robertson and I am the Senior Themed Years Communications and Engagement Manager here at Visit Scotland. And my role is to work with both internal and external stakeholders and I lead on the marketing, communications and engagement strategy for themed years. Now, let me introduce you to all the speakers from Visit Scotland who you will be hearing from on this webinar today. Firstly, I'd like to introduce Mary Christie, who heads up the development department within the Visit Scotland Events Directorate, and her teams are responsible for events industry development, events and exhibitions, and Scotland's themed years. Mary will provide a background on themed years, how they came about and what they aim to achieve, along with examples of impact and core objectives for the themed years programme. Next up is Chris Greenwood, our Senior Tourism Insights Manager at Visit Scotland. Chris is responsible for monitoring and interpreting trends in Scottish tourism. He will identify the trends and insights around storytelling, provide some case studies and look at what makes a great story for industry to tell. And finally, we will hear from Jenny Steele, who's our Film and Creative Industries Manager at Visit Scotland, and she will share how to make the most of Scotland's powerful literary and film connections. She will also highlight the anniversaries coming up in 2022 and showcase the existing resources for film, TV and literature, which are available on visitscotland.com. I will now hand over to Mary Christie for the background on themed years. Over to you, Mary. Thanks, Susan. Good afternoon, everyone. Yep, my name is Mary Christie and I'm Head of De Development in the Events Directorate at Visit Scotland. Um, and part of my role is to lead on strategy for themed years. It's so great to see such a broad representation on today's webinar from across the tourism industry with colleagues from a wide range of sectors associated with our 2022 theme. There's so much enthusiasm around the stories theme. It's such an exciting opportunity and we at Visit Scotland are all really looking forward to working with all of you to maximise the potential of the year together. Themed years are designed to showcase the very best of Scotland, its product, its places and its people. And the key principle is quite simple. It's the creation of a collaborative pro promotional platform that we can all get behind, thereby multiplying our individual efforts to shine a spotlight on Scotland and its unique attributes. And in 2022, it's our rich and diverse stories that we'll be putting in the spotlight. Scotland's programme of themed years has now seen 10 editions. And you can see, as you can see on the slide, some of you will, some of you will have been involved in all or some of these um, over the years. Um, and some of you less will be less familiar with the themed years story. So here's a bit of background. It all started with Homecoming Scotland 2009, which was a unique concept at the time, representing one of the largest collaborative tourism and events initiatives that Scotland had ever staged. The year was rooted in the celebration of Burns's 250th anniversary and extended to celebrate many of Scotland's great contributions to the world, including whisky, golf, great minds and innovations and our rich culture and heritage. It was a year long countrywide celebration that featured more than 400 events and a major national and international communications campaign. It generated significant impacts, influencing 95,000 additional visitors to travel to Scotland throughout 2009, generated around 54 million of additional revenue for Scotland, 154 million pounds worth of positive media coverage worldwide and a host of other positive outcomes. However, perhaps the most notable outcome in terms of less legacy was the unprecedented joining of public, private and third sector organisations 
Scotland, both in Scotland and overseas, all pulling in the same direction to celebrate and promote Scotland within the same framework, utilising a common brand and messaging and multiplying our individual efforts to great effect. At the close of 09, Scottish ministers decided to take on board this key learning and agreed to a programme of themed years that would facilitate ongoing partnership working and collaboration in order to celebrate and promote Scotland's unique assets. At its heart, the model focuses on domestic and international tourism and the creation of an events programme that showcases and animates these assets. Across all of our 10 themed years to date, each has delivered specific impacts and each has been different depending on the opportunity, the strategic context and, of course, what partners can bring to the table. Each year the approach has developed with more and more partners joining the effort. To guide the strategy, an industry consultation was undertaken prior to our Year of Young People in 2018 to establish appetite and effectiveness of themed years. The results showed huge support for continuing the approach, but reinforced the need to review the delivery model in order to allow for more clear planning time and to maximise the effectiveness and opportunities for engagement and collaboration. That was an excellent idea and one that we certainly put into practice with the decision that from 2018 onwards, themed years would take place every other year. But obviously, the pandemic had an impact and as a result, our year of coastal waters has been rolled over into 2021 and year of stories 22 planning time has been somewhat concertinaed. The year of stories had always been in plan for 2022 and when we consulted last year to establish if the year should be pushed back to accommodate the rollover of our current year of coasts and waters, the strong message we received was to proceed as planned as there was already a huge anticipation for our year of stories and it would be an important shared platform to contribute towards recovery. Next slide please Susan. As I said, for all of our themed years, the basic aim is that we spotlight, celebrate and promote specific key and unique assets that can really showcase what Scotland has to offer, providing a platform for partnerships and collaboration so that multiple partners all pull in the same direction and multiply the volume. Reflecting that principle, themed years have developed a consistent framework of overarching objections, promotion, celebration, participation, collaboration and industry engagement. Those are our key objectives, with each year defining its own specific and measurable delivery strategies within that framework. A central requirement of the theme year's approach is to select a theme that has the potential to engage multiple partners across the whole country in order that each part of Scotland has the opportunity to get behind the year and benefit from it. I hope you'll agree that Stories has a great potential for this as every part of Scotland has its own stories to tell, every business has its own story and every visitor can share their own tales of Scotland. So now you've heard the story of our themed years I'm going to pass back to our host Susan who's going to tell us more about our year of stories themes and some practical advice on how you can get involved. Thank you, Mary. OK, so what is Scotland's Year of Stories all about? I'll provide an overview of the aims and themes, then we'll look specifically at the marketing toolkit and provide some practical examples of how different businesses, organisations and partners can get involved. The focus for the year is about spotlighting, celebrating and promoting the wealth of stories inspired by, written or created in Scotland. As you can see from the aim, we are encouraging all different forms of stories to be promoted as part of the year, whether that's literature, oral, film, TV or music. Encouraging both locals and visitors to experience our stories, take part in events and explore the places, people and cultures connected to all forms of our stories, both past and present. We want the year to represent a diversity of voices, as well as stimulating visits to Scotland to contribute to recovery from the pandemic and inspire new stories of Scotland to be shared by everyone. So we would encourage you to think about the stories that you can tell, whether they are undiscovered stories or promoting the stories you love and want to share with others. We will give some examples of the kind of stories you could promote further on in the webinar. The year of stories will be inclusive and diverse, embracing the widest range of activity and content aligned to the themes. 
The visitor opportunity in terms of experiences and events will be broadly presented across the widest range of forms and across five cross cutting strands. The first one, iconic stories and storytellers. These are the ones we all know and love and want to share them with the world. This theme will celebrate and share stories from screen and entertainment, as well as literature, oral and community events and traditions. So to help bring this to life, some examples that would fit within this theme would be our iconic Scottish authors, your likes of Robert Burns, Sir Walter Scott, GM Barry, more contemporary authors and poets like Rankin, Cleves, Jackie Kay, Irvin Welsh. Great storytellers also are within this theme, like Billy Connolly. Authors who've been inspired by Scotland, like Wordsworth, Gabaldon, Poe, Beatrix Potter, and also the iconic films and TV, like Outlander, James Bond, Harry Potter and Peter Pan. Also visitor attractions and tours with links to books and authors would fit within this theme. The second theme is new stories. New stories is an opportunity to shine a light on new and untold stories, to showcase voices from all of Scotland's diverse communities and to challenge some of the stories we have traditionally told. The focus is on new and emerging fresh approaches where Scotland has led the way in how stories are told. Some examples from this theme would include Jenny Fagan, who wrote Luckin Booth, Kirsten Innes, who wrote Scabby Queen, other emerging talent like Graham Armstrong, the author of The Young Team, Ransom F.A., who's an Aberdeenshire based rapper. Who are the literary heroes which aren't the established voices that we all know about? This theme also gives us an opportunity to hear from new communities, including new Scots communities, youth voices, LG LGBTQ+, Lots of great opportunities for this theme. The third theme is Scotland's people and places. This theme is showcasing Scotland as the source and inspiration for stories, both old and new. Spotlighting how others across the world tell their stories about their homeland. And the theme provides ideal opportunities to create our sense of identity, place and community. Again, engaging wide audiences and diverse voices. Some examples for this theme could be the museums and galleries that we have across Scotland, with them being both curators and storytellers themselves, visitor attractions like Abbotsford, Moat Bray, the Scottish Storytelling Centre. Our Indigenous languages are also a key focus for this theme. So that's Gaelic, Doric and Scots. Film and TV set in Scotland and about Scotland, such as Sunset Song, Whiskey Galore, Shetland, Harry Potter. And also the film locations. So Glencoe was featured in the Skyfall film. Avengers Infinity War was filmed in Edinburgh. And the Da Vinci Code features Roslyn Chapel. Landscapes as well. Scotland is an inspiring place and is inspiration for tales. For example, Loch Ness. And also real life locations that have inspired authors and appear in their books. Like Flesh Market Close featuring in Ian Rankin's novels. Scotland Street, Alexandra McCall Smith. Our fourth theme is local tales and legends. This theme focuses on our community tales. Communities and their stories, like myths and legends, things locally held and treasured that provide real colour across the whole of Scotland. We're looking for you to share your stories from your business, your destination, your town, to help provide this colour in the year of stories. And there's also the opportunity to explore folklore and legends and mythical creatures within this theme. So some examples um, from the different regions, we've got the Corrie Wreck and Whirlpool, Scale House in Orkney, the Kelpies, the Fairy Glen, Fingal's Cave. I'm sure you can all think of lots that you can tell. There's a great opportunity to tell stories through trails, walks and talks and other experiences to bring places to life. Subjects and characters to spotlight, for example, Rob Roy, Tam O'Shanter, Burke and Hare, and also looking at folklore, ghost tales, fairies, old wives tales, old island stories. Lots of great examples in this theme. And our final theme is inspired by nature. This focuses on the stories that connect us to the natural world. This theme is about pulling out the elements of the natural world and how that's reflected in stories. This theme aligns well with sustainability objects, objectives and is a great legacy from our year of coasts and waters. We're also looking to draw out the story of how Scotland's stunning natural world has shaped our identity and brand and inspiring people to take better care of it. 
So some examples from this theme could be nature authors. We have a, a number of good nature authors in Scotland, such as Nan Shepherd, who wrote the Living Mountain book about the Cairngorms, George Mackay Brown, who wrote about life and nature in or Orkney, locations which have inspired literature, Loch Ness, Burns Cottage, and literary legends and local stories aligned to nature. So as previously mentioned, the year will be inclusive, diverse and accessible to all. We will celebrate the broadest range of visitor experiences in relation to the themes with a focus on unique, authentic experiences and sustainable tourism. We encourage all partners to consider the accessibility of the stories that you tell and the forms in which you communicate. The year will include and promote a diversity of voices such as emerging and undiscovered talent, underrepresented groups, our Indigenous languages, young people and new Scots communities. So how can you get involved in our themed year? To demonstrate how other organisations and businesses have aligned with themed years, I wanted to share some examples from our current year of Coasts and Waters to help provide some inspiration. We had businesses like Dunnett Bay Distillers and Keith Ness, who created an innovative new visitor experience to celebrate the year of Coasts and Waters, theming their tasting room with a coastal maritime theme. The Melvick Hotel in Sutherland collaborated with North Coast Water Sports to package up a Learn to Surf weekend retreat. The v &A branded up their mobile catering unit with the Year of Coasts and Waters logo. And Northlink Ferries also created posters which display the logo. Five West in Argyll displayed the logo prominently in their window, which was great to see and really easy for any business to do to show their support of the year. Destination groups also got involved in the year by creating new content, like the series of blog posts that Welcome to Fife developed to promote the coasts and waters experiences and attractions across Fife. Some of our key partners like Historic Environment Scotland got involved by creating a specific section on their website in support of Coasts and Waters and established a funding opportunity aligned to the year. Nature Scott launched a funding opportunity as well as a photography competition to create a year of Coasts and Waters themed calendar for 2021. So lots of examples from a wide range of businesses and organisations who've used the logo or created content or aligned projects. We have had a huge number of partners engage on social media too, sharing the hashtag. Have a search under the hashtags YCW2020 and YCW2021 on Twitter to see how everyone has engaged on social media platforms for some inspiration. So our Year of Stories marketing toolkit for industry is now live and available for you to access. The link is visitscotland.org forward slash year dash of dash stories. The toolkit will take you through a range of ways to get involved in the year. Telling authentic stories to visitors, essentially becoming a storyteller yourself, is a great way to engage with the year as well as providing visitors and locals with inspiring things to see and do in the area. Stories are vital to every part of Scotland, so we encourage you to get involved with the theme year and help share your stories. Within the toolkit, you'll find more details on the five themes. We also have the logo available to download free of charge. This is available in both English and Gaelic. There's a link to the image collection on the Visit Scotland image library. Again, this is free to use and has a great selection of images to help with your promotion of the year. We've got a link to our insights paper for the Year of Stories. I won't talk too much about that as I don't want to steal Chris's thunder. He'll be going into that in more detail later on. We've got links out to our partner event programme and the Community Stories Fund. I'll provide a bit more detail on those opportunities later in the webinar. We've got a top tip section of how to make the most of the year and some practical advice in there. Links out to the Visit Scotland Inclusive Tourism Toolkit, also the Gaelic Tourism Toolkit. Toolkit. We've got frequently asked questions and also a list of examples of film and literature locations across Scotland. And again, Jenny will cover more detail on the opportunities for screen tourism later in this webinar. So looking forward to the hashtags that we are going to be using for the year. One of the easiest ways to be part of the Year of Stories is to use our hashtags on social media platform. So what hashtags should you use? 
hashtag YS2022 is the main hashtag for you to use. And this can be used from today on your social posts all the way through to the end of December next year. So why not post on your social channels that 2022 is the year of stories and a great time to visit and discover Scotland's wealth of stories. In addition, for any social media activity that's for consumers, we will be using the hashtag Tales of Scotland in addition to YS2022. So this hashtag is also available for you to use in your social media activity where you think it's relevant. We will be encouraging visitors and locals to use Tales of Scotland to tell their stories of their visit to Scotland. So just to recap, always use the hashtag YS2022. That's the full wording of 2022, not just 22. And if your message on social media is to consumers, you can also use the hashtag Tales of Scotland. So as I've outlined earlier, there's opportunities for everyone to engage with the year, no matter what size of business or organisation. Let me give you some examples and inspiration of how you can get involved. So for museums and galleries, this year is really made for you as your creators and storytellers yourselves. Whether it's telling the story behind individual objects or artworks in your collection or creating a whole new exhibition to celebrate the year, the options are endless. Please tell your stories, remind visitors it's the year of stories in 2022 and use the logo on your websites and printed material. If you're a transport provider, why not tell the stories of the destinations you are taking passengers to or the history of travelling around Scotland and how it's developed over the years. For food and drink businesses, what stories can you tell about your food and drink products and experiences? From the origins of a whisky distillery to the stories behind the food on our plates, there are lots of stories to tell. Scottish Food and Drink Fortnight is happening just now and I'd recommend looking at their website for inspiration. Create content for your channels to promote and share these great stories. If you're an accommodation provider, you might not have any obvious connections to stories, so why not think about attractions nearby that are relevant to the year or tour guides that operate in your destination? Does your hometown have a local author or has it been the setting for a novel, a film or a TV series? If so, why not share this with your guests? Tell visitors it's the year of stories in 2022 and encourage them to visit an attraction, take a tour or attend an event to discover the wealth of stories Scotland has on offer. If you're a tour guide, well, again, the year was made for you. We have such fantastic tour guides across all of Scotland telling a wide and varied range of stories. So do, please do use the logo on your websites and share on social media using the hashtags. Why not look at 2022 as an opportunity to create a new, new tour for visitors and locals in celebration of the Year of Stories? If you're a visitor attraction, we've got a wealth of attractions across Scotland that align with one or more of the themes of the year. So there's lots of opportunities for you to get involved too. Use the year as the opportunity to tell the story of your attraction, especially any undiscovered stories, as they always go down well with customers. In terms of opportunities for other partners, if you're a tourism group, um, destination or a sectoral group, we would very much encourage you to engage with the year. Across the destination or sector, you can tell the stories from local communities, promote relevant attractions, experiences and tours, or spotlight interesting characters for visitors to engage with. Previously, tourism groups have created some lovely content such as blog posts, website landing pages, photographic competitions, as well as sharing the content and related images on social media. Why not create a monthly content plan so that you have a story going out every month to inspire people to visit? If you're an event organiser and have an event taking place next year, there could be an opportunity to add a new programme strand that aligns to Year of Stories. There's also a partner events programme as part of the year, which is now live. And it is a free opportunity for anyone running an aligned event in 2022. I'll provide more detail on that later. If you're a library, again, this year is really made for you. Lots of opportunities to develop new activity aligned to the year. Please do use the logo and the hashtag on all the activity that you do in support of the year. If you're a community group, why not tell the stories from your community, share your local tales and legends with our visitors. We have a community stories fund that is open to applications at the moment, providing funding for community events to take place in 2022. I will provide more detail on this later. 
if you're a local authority, we've had a number of local authorities engage with the Year of Coasts and Waters to date, so there's lots of opportunities for you to be involved in the Year of Stories as well. Why not create content or aligned activity in support of the year, telling the stories from your local towns and villages and promote the attractions and experiences that are on offer in your destination? And finally, we are working with a number of aligned agencies and organisations to shape the year, such as Creative Scotland and Literature Alliance Scotland. There's lots of exciting projects that partners are working on for 2022. So if you're an aligned organisation who would like to get involved in the year as well, we would welcome hearing from you about your ideas and plans. So how to get involved? First off, download the logo and let people know that you're proud to be taking part in the themed year. From websites to social media, email signatures to flyers, the official free to use supporting Year of Stories 2022 logo can be used across your own promotions. It's free to download from the toolkit in both English and in Gaelic. Images of Scotland and visuals can really help to tell a story. We have a collection of free images to use to access them, simply register for our digital media library. There's also an example of film, TV and literature locations on the toolkit. So why not look into the places near you with a literature or screen connection and see what you can promote. Social media is the latest form of storytelling and a great way to share your stories, join the conversation and to reach new audiences. Whether your preferred channel is Facebook, Instagram or Twitter, don't forget to use our Year of Stories campaign hashtags on your posts to help people find your content. So those hashtags were YS2022 and Tales of Scotland. More advice on building your digital skills is also available on the toolkit. You can get a free web listing on visitscotland.com, which will allow you to promote your offering to consumers across the world. Update your listing with your theme year activity and products to make people aware of what you're doing. Create new content. The Year of Stories is a great opportunity to create new content, such as a page on your website, to tell your stories and inspire visitors. You can use our image library collection on the toolkit to help your content stand out. You can also link back to the Year of Stories content on visitscotland.com as well, as there'll be lots added to as the year progresses. Why not look to develop new products or experiences as the themed year is a great opportunity to develop these, like the examples from Dunnett Bay Distillers and the Melvick Hotel that I mentioned earlier. Why not speak to your Visit Scotland Industry Relationship Manager for advice on this? And our partner events programme. So as I mentioned earlier, this is part of our toolkit and through this you can sign up to the partner events programme. Many event organisers choose to celebrate the theme and be part of the national campaign, even if their events aren't directly funded by Visit Scotland. This is a free, non-funded opportunity whereby events which align well with the theme are invited to sign up via an online form on the Visit Scotland website. In order to qualify, events must be public facing, appeal to locals and visitors alike, have confirmed dates and be relevant to the theme. So how do event organisers benefit? If you're part of the Partner Events Programme, you'll get a free listing on visitscotland.com, social media support through Event Scott News Twitter, and also be considered for any wider promotional opportunities. The programme is also open to themed tours, so if you have a tour for next year that aligns with one of the themes, you can also get listed. So the Partner Events Programme is now open and events and tours taking place from the 1st of January to the 31st of December 2022 are welcome to apply. So hopefully by now you're all inspired and thinking about how you can engage with the Year of Stories. But for anyone who isn't quite sure how to get involved, let's take a look at some top tips which can be found within the toolkit. So first of all, celebrate your local distinctiveness. Visitors want to discover authentic experiences and hidden gems. Can you share knowledge on local legends, folk tales, or lesser known stories to celebrate the year? Why not take inspiration from local tour guides? We'd encourage you to get to know Scotland's writers, literature and film locations. As many visitors want to find out more about our stories and legends or walk in the footsteps of a literary hero. Why not learn more about the writers and stories, visitor attractions, festivals and bookshops in your area. Check out the resources linked to from the toolkit for where to start. You can also collaborate with others. 
Are there local businesses or organisations you could explore working with to create new experiences, itineraries or products in celebration of the year to inspire visitors and locals? Think about how you might be able to work together to target new markets and expand your reach. You can also share the story of your business and organisation. Take a look at the organisation's history, people and products and think about how best to share that story with potential visitors in a way that will surprise and engage them. And finally, consider the accessibility of the stories that you tell and the forms in which you communicate. It's important to consider this as the toolkit includes a link to our inclusive to tourism toolkit where you can get advice and support on how to make your content accessible and inclusive and also check out our Gallic toolkit to discover how you can use the language and its culture to create a more immersive visitor experience. So developing a themed year's events program is a really important part of any themed year, creating highlights across the country which people can enjoy. Events provide key moments throughout the year. They attract press coverage along with new interest and participants and provide a focus to take us through the whole year. The Year of Stories Open Events Fund closed in August and we are currently assessing applications to this fund as there was a huge response and a large number of applications. Successful applications will form part of the bigger events programme that will take place throughout the year and will be part of our consumer launch at the end of this year. Although that open events fund is now closed, the good news is we also have an additional funding opportunity. This is called the Community Stories Fund. We are delivering this in partnership with Museums Gallery Scotland and National Lottery Heritage Fund. The fund is aimed at supporting organisations and community groups to take part in and celebrate Scotland's Year of Stories and to enable the themed year to have an increased impact throughout the country and to support local attractions, museums, venues, artists, creative and tourism networks. We are hoping this fund will really help to support events which emphasise the distinctiveness of Scotland's communities and local areas. Museums Gallery Scotland are administering the fund and there will be two rounds of funding. The deadline for round one is the 1st of October 2021 and round two of the fund will open for applications on the 24th of January 2022. There is a total budget of 300,000 for this fund and grant awards between 500 and 5,000 pounds are available and this fund is open for applications at the moment. Across our open community stories and partner events programmes, we expect a really exciting and rich range of events to take place across the whole country next year. To give you an understanding of the timings we are working to, now we've launched the year to industry, we're working towards a full programme launch in early December. This is the big consumer moment where we launch it to the world. We would encourage everyone to join in with a pre-promotion activity ahead of the year starting to help build awareness and excitement of what is to come in 2022. The year will officially start on the 1st of January and run until the 31st of December 2022. Okay, now I will hand over to Chris Greenwood from the Visit Scotland Insights team who will be looking at trends and insights around storytelling. Over to you, Chris. Thank you very much, Susan. As mentioned, my name is Chris Greenwood. I'm from the Insight Department here at Visit Scotland. Now, we've heard uh, uh, that the Year of Story is going to provide fantastic opportunities for tourism within Scotland. And what I would like to do over the, the next 10 minutes is um, really talk about the, the role of storytelling in the promotion and marketing of Scotland. Um, we've heard about the, the toolkit that is available on visitscotland.org and I'd really recommend everybody to uh, have a look at that just to give you an idea of the wealth of information uh, that, that's available there. There's also the research and insight section on visitscotland.org and many of the elements that I'm going to cover uh, in this presentation, um, there's a much more detail uh, around those uh, in uh, visitscotland.org in the, the research and insight section. So if we can move on to the, the next slide, please. And um, we have to ask ourselves, what are stories and why do they matter? Well, for me, the best definition is that the role of stories 
is a method to engage emotions, to entertain, convey a message, and maybe even change an audience uh, in the way that it thinks or feels about uh, an issue or a destination or, you know, the world around them. Storytelling has a rich heritage in Scotland and it has uh, conveyed a compelling image to entice visitors over the years. And this has been going on for, for, for hundreds of years. And indeed, uh, there is an argument that some of the earlier authors uh, in Scotland uh, inspired people to come and visit and therefore created uh, modern tourism as we understand it today. As stories evoke an emotion, they can do so on several levels, and this is indicated by the themes that uh, the Year of Stories uh, have embraced and are sharing uh, with our potential visitors and audiences. But all of those elements relate to Scotland's brand. If we can move on to the next slide, please. So we talk about Scotland's brand's essence, and it's very well established, and, and, and research reaffirms uh, but at its core, it is a human and dramatic and enduring uh, that are the central elements that visitors are inspired by when they come to Scotland. And those elements uh, of human dramatic enduring can really be uh, interpreted as, um, you know, the heritage and culture, the landscape and the people, the warmth of welcome uh, that people receive uh, when they come to Scotland. We also know that uh, research finds that visitor experience often exceeds expectation and Scotland is very much an emotional destination. And of course, this ties in to the, the, the role and, and connection and enrichment that stories can convey and again reaffirms the opportunity that this forthcoming year is going to present. It's often said that, that people remember most um, about uh, visiting a destination are the stories that they've engaged with and the stories that they write about themselves, the transformational experience that tourism and travel will convey. And that's what they want to share with other people uh, and, and, and the, the destinations that they go to. If we move on to the, the next slide, please. So Visit Scotland regularly undertakes uh, visitor se uh, sentiment research to understand the drivers and motivators uh, which inspire visitation. Now, we've seen that most visitors are influenced by the landscape, the history and culture and heritage, and the people of Scotland. But it's also through uh, the media, a medium with which that inspiration is delivered, that stories reside. Now, often people are um, inspired by travel programs uh, that, that uh, display the, the opportunities uh, and, and showcase the destination that they're going to. But increasingly, it's, it's more of the kind of fictional stories uh, through uh, TV, uh, film and literature uh, that people receive uh, some of that inspiration. While many will receive direct marketing referrals from friends, you know, it's these sources of film and television and literature that are going to be the catalyst to begin the planning of a trip. And this is especially the case for international visitors, but it's also domestic, the domestic market that is, is influenced by all these different opportunities that, that are available uh, through TV, film uh, and literature. So we've seen that um, role of, of films like Braveheart and Outlander um, are ones that, that uh, visitors mention uh, quite a lot. But you have to also remember that with the uh, advent and growth of streaming services, um, the longevity of films and television uh, that feature Scotland is increasingly being extended. So films like Highlander, the Harry Potter series, even Monarch of the Glen uh, can showcase Scotland, you know, at the demand of visitors uh, through the various channels that they can access uh, their media choices. If we move on to the, to the next slide, please. So reflecting on the themes of the year of stories, um, it, it's, it's interesting that um, we can look at maybe two examples uh, that are applying similar uh, storytelling themes um, 
within their businesses. Now, these are two examples that I chose from outside of Scotland where, you know, we've been using some of those themes of, of uh, people, history, uh, local stories, um, you know, to, to, to really reflect uh, how storytelling can be used by uh, the tourism industry to promote their product or destination. The first one that I want to refer to is the Hermitage Hotel, which is in uh, Nashville in uh, the, the, the US. Now, historically, uh, the hotel was at the centre of the women's suffrage movement in, in the US. Now, to celebrate the centenary of uh, the, 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 the happening, the, the, the history, the, the monumental events of, of, of that particular time, uh, the hotel created uh, an exhibition displaying some of the memorabilia and artefacts uh, for visitors to view that they had collected from that particular point in time. Now, along with this uh, interpretation of storytelling uh, of this historic moment, they also had uh, themed menus and cocktails, therefore creating sort of like, you know, and furthering the legacy and the story that they wanted to get uh, be associated with at that particular time within their product. The other uh, example that we've got is uh, La Bicicleta Verde in Santiago, Chile. Now they're a, a guided bicycle tour uh, operator and they do the usual kind of city tours where uh, you can go around and you can be guided and they'll tell you about uh, the city of Santiago. But they also provide uh, a package which goes into more of the detail of the political history of Chile. Right Now, this sits alongside their usual city tours and also they do uh, vineyard tours. But it was a particularly bold approach where they wanted to look at, you know, something that would probably engage visitors, but maybe also surprise them. Um, in that it goes beyond what maybe other destinations were doing and, and capitalising on the rich history uh, that, that um, the, the, the city of Santiago and the country of Chile uh, has. But what also draw, drew me to this as a, a case study was also the owners shared their story of the company and really kind of emphasised what the values and objectives were. So it focused very much on the people and the human connection that storytelling can have. And it's the same that could be within your story as well. You know, are there charismatic individuals, interesting individuals that are in your area, within your business, that have got stories that would be able to promote and embody um, your company uh, and your vision as well? Just move on to the, the, the final slide, please. So. Um, just to conclude, what does make a great story? Now, at the beginning, I had a, a quote on, on the screen that was from Umberto Eco. And um, what he said was that the, the role of a story um, very much needs to have um, the interpretation of the reader to be able to deliver that emotion. So clearly, um, a story needs to be emotionally meaningful for the visitor. But it's only with the involvement of your customers that the stories can gain strength. And if you think about uh, their role in uh, sharing their experiences through social media to get those referrals, you can see how people can take that transformational experience that tourism provides and share your story and their story with others. It also helps to show a bit of emotion. We saw about uh, La Bicicleta Verde in uh, Chile, uh, looking at some of the raw elements of, of trying to get a, a, a political story across. But I mean, humour as well works very well in being able to, to, to bond and share your visions and your stories um, with your guests and, and, and customers. But really, storytelling is only limited by our imaginations. So, you know, we can grow without limits in terms of uh, being able to, to, to take the themes that we've got and really sort of like embody them in what you want to say about your destination, your company, your visions and your objectives. So ultimately, what will your story be in 2022? Now, if we take that uh, one step further, 
I'm going to now pass you on to Jenny Steele, the Film and Creative Industries Manager for Visit Scotland, who's going to be looking at uh, in depth at uh, promoting uh, screen and literary tourism uh, within Scotland. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Jenny Steele. I look after film and creative industries um, and I was really delighted that when this uh, themed year was announced that we could really delve into this in much greater depth and actually you know, work with many more partners and, and share this with, with really wide audiences. So I'm just going to talk you through a few of the um, um, opportunities around film and literary tourism. Um, some of you are already doing this really well. Other people might just be starting off. So hopefully this will give you um, some inspiration. So Scotland has a pretty impressive you know, collection of film and TV um, associations and, and you know, many of, of which are well known, others less so. So 2022 will create a really great um, you know, opportunity to bring these to life and encourage visitors at home and abroad to share in them. And there's long been an interest in writers, inspiring other writers, artists, musicians, and of course, visitors. And we have Walter Scott to thank for much of the early development of literary tourism with his works making Scotland such a fashionable destination from the early 19th century. And we'll talk a little bit later about how some of those um, strands can be developed um, through Walter Scott's work. So if we could move on to the next slide. So turning viewers into visitors is our main aim here. Um, screen tourists, set jetters, lots of ways of describing people who are interested in visiting film and TV locations. And we've seen a real rise in this type of visitor uh, over the years. So as Chris pointed out, there's a significant opportunity here for us to tap into film fans, um, their, their desires and, and, and desire to visit the locations um, of their favourite movies and, and film stars and also target the immense fan bases which some productions are fortunate to attract, Outlander being one of them. Um, we've seen some really impressive tourism figures related to the series since it began um, and Visit Scotland does have an Outlander effect report um, on our visitscotland.org website um, which has some really good case studies um, and evidence um, into how footfall has increased at some of the properties. There's currently a huge interest in Scotland as a location, both within the screen industry and the media, and with considerable investment in studios and crew, this is set to increase. So now feels like a great time to be talking up Scotland's film credentials and looking forward to continuing success in the future. Screen tourism certainly offers plenty of opportunities either for a region or a specific location. So seeing Scotland's stunning scenery on screen presents us with a ready-made advert which money can't buy. And Scotland is also very good at playing other roles when the location is meant to be somewhere else, which could create an interesting story in itself. For example, the Isle of Harris was the location for the surface of Jupiter in 2001 Space Odyssey. Glasgow's George Square doubles as Philadelphia in World War Z, and much of Scotland plays areas of France in season two of Outlander. So screen tourism also has a long shelf life. We're still seeing visitors come to Scotland inspired by the likes of Braveheart, Highlander, Da Vinci Code and Local Hero many years after they were released. So these films are very much still in people's minds in relation to Scotland and are constantly being shown on various TV networks. So it's reinvigorating that desire to go and visit these locations. Using film and TV to attract visitors can be done in a variety of ways. You can develop maps, trails, fan related tourism products, but make sure that you always stay on the right side of licensing laws uh, because these are the things that can sometimes trip people up. So do always check before you um, start any activity. There's also opportunities for events and special film screenings or mini film festivals. Screenings at the locations where a film was shot are popular and that adds interest and potential for repeat visitors. So an example of this was Roslyn Chapel organised a screening of The Da Vinci Code, which of course features the chapel, to celebrate the film's 10th anniversary. Visit Scotland worked with a range of partners in Fife on a screening of The Outlaw King at Dunfermline Abbey in Gallery, and that was attended by the director and the producers. And of course, it's not just about the locations themselves. Cinemas too have so many great stories to tell about their heritage, the building and famous names who visited them. So if we could move on to the next one. 
The 2022 presents a great opportunity to share what writers love and have loved about Scotland. Many of them have been inspired by a place in some way or other which can be felt through their works. The classics like Scott, Burns, Stevenson, Muriel Spark, Alistair Gray and Ian Banks, to lovers of nature and wilderness like Nan Shepherd and Norman McCaig. And today's writers telling current stories like Kathleen Jamie or New Macker, Ian Rankin, Douglas Stewart and Val McDermott. All of these connections to a place present opportunities for developing literary tourism ideas, whether it be tours, trails, author events, or tying additional tourism activity into an established book festival to provide more for visitors to do while they're there or stay longer. This picture here of some steps in Edinburgh's old town um, were renamed as part of the Muriel Spark centenary celebrations. Um, so it shows that creating literary landmarks can be a great way to connect a writer with a place and provide new themes to help visitors explore, as well as encourage locals to learn more about their own area and their literary heritage. There's also a wealth of children's literature set in or inspired by Scotland, The Wind and the Willows, Peter Rabbit, The Beano, Peter Pan, Katie Morag, just to name a few, all with great potential for creating events, trails, interpretation sites or educational opportunities for children and families. And then not to mention the nostalgia element for adults too, with many of us having grown up with some of those titles. A lovely example of this is the way that Ardkinglass Estate in Argyll has developed a Gruffalo Trail, um, a magical woodland trail for children to find the various characters featured in the books. But this version has a bit of a twist as it's in Scots, so it can create a great opportunity to really connect with our other native languages. If we could move on to the next slide. So another way to bring a story to life is perhaps through a significant anniversary, which provides a reason for people to visit at a specific time. So a once only opportunity to be part of those celebrations. So a few highlighted here might spark some ideas for activity or maybe some collaboration with others who already have something in the pipeline. And I'll maybe pick out a couple here, especially Walter Scott, this 250th anniversary. Um, and this is a great um, chance that this is tying in with the themed year. Um, Abbotsford, Scott's uh, Borders home um, and various partners um, are do already doing a lot of activity. Um, so there might be something there that if you have a Scott related um, location, you might want to tie into that. So do have a look at the Scott 250 website uh, for more background inspiration and events that will be happening in, over the coming year. With Walter Scott, obviously many others were inspired by him. Artists like Landseer and Millet, um, Felix Mendelssohn, the composer who visited and um, wrote his famous Hebrides Overture, having visited Scotland and being inspired by Scott's work. Jules Verne was a fan of Scott and on visiting Scotland based many of his famous works on his travels here. So there's lots of angles to explore out with the day-to-day -day literature connections with the potential to tell a, heart, a different tale, something people may not have heard before. And of course, the George IV anniversary there also ties into Scott as he was instrumental in organising the King's visit. The Dracula one is a great link uh, here with uh, Bram Stoker having visited Cruden Bay and Slane's Castle in Aberdeenshire. It's a real interest in Gothic, horror, dark tourism, perhaps opportunity for tours, readings or events. Um, in fact, the Elphinstone Institute has done some work recently with Visit Scotland uh, on developing stories of Aberdeenshire. So that might provide some additional detail and some background for opportunities. Some good industrial heritage stories here, um, really sort of looking at the differences between the um, Caledonian Canal and uh, the Falkirk Wheel, how sort of developments have, have gone in, in technology and, and heritage, um, the first radio broadcast and also some scientific developments with Dolly as well. We've got a great opportunity here with a film anniversary with Skyfall. Those aerial scenes of Glen Etive were absolutely breathtaking and visitors to the area increased on the back of it. So perhaps an opportunity for a local screening event or an off, um, exhibition. So if we could move on to the final slide. So over the years, we've developed a lot of content around film, TV and literature on our visitscotland.com site. And as well as creating inspiration for our visitors, we hope this may be of use to you too in helping create your own materials for the year um, of stories and beyond. So by combining this with the toolkit that you've heard about today, uh, we hope that this will help develop ideas to create some memorable events and activities. So I would like to now hand back to Susan.
Thank you, Jenny. I hope everybody's found the speaker sessions useful and that you've all got lots of ideas as to how to get involved with the Year of Stories. Just to recap, these are the five main takeaways of how you can get involved and help to celebrate the year. Firstly, using the hashtags YS2022 and Tales of Scotland in your social media posts. Make sure you download the Year of Stories logo from our toolkit. Make us aware of any new products or experiences that you will be creating for the Year of Stories 2022, and we will look to see how we can use them in our promotional activity. Create your own content online or in print to share your stories with customers and audiences. And keep checking back to the toolkit as it will be regularly updated with new content as the months go on. So that's the end of the presentation. I hope you found it useful and now have a better understanding of the Year of Stories and some inspiration as to how you can be a part of it. We will take all the submitted questions that have come in and they will be answered as part of the follow up after this webinar and you can find that on visitscotland.org. As we're now at the end of the webinar, I wanted to say thank you again to everyone for taking the time to attend and hopefully you will have lots of ideas of how you can get involved in the Year of Stories. Remember, there's the opportunity to get involved at any level from sharing content to using the hashtag through to developing a specific campaign or project. To follow up, if you would like to contact the Themed Years team, our email address is themedyears at visitscotland.com and the toolkit can be found on visitscotland.org forward slash year dash of dash stories. There will be a follow up email and a recording of this webinar for all attendees. And when the webinar is live on visitscotland.org as a recording, you will be able to watch it again. We look forward to hearing your stories and seeing your activity for our year of stories in 2022. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.